Hello again, class. So we're moving on in the play Tartuffe to Acts 4 and 5 and the end of the play. This is a five-act play, and five acts was the standard number of acts for a play at this time. And in a five-act play, it follows a pretty traditional trajectory, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So in Act 4, we see the aftermath of Damis's confrontation with his father. He tells Orgon that he saw Tartuffe touching Elmir and trying to get closer, shall we say, to Orgon's wife, Elmir. But Orgon doesn't believe him. Orgon is convinced that Damis is just angry against Tartuffe and he goes so far as to disown his own son. So now that Damis is disowned, Tartuffe, if he marries Marianne, is set to inherit all of Oregon's money. So in this act, we also see the wife, Elmir, execute her plan to try to prove to Oregon that Tartuffe is a fraud. She has Orgon hide, just like Damis was hidden before so he could eavesdrop, Orgon hides under the table and wait till you see what happens between Elmir and Tartuffe. So in the end, Orgon does finally get the proof he needs uh, that Tartuffe is indeed a fraud, but it might be too late. Tartuffe might try to take his house away from him. So as we watch the resolution of this conflict, pay attention to the twists and turns of the plot. In what ways does this play use irony where characters would go against our expectations or surprise us? That's a part of what makes this a comedy are those ironic twists. This play uses the traditional structure of comedic plays. Um, some of the traditional qualities of a comedy are the stock characters. Stock characters are characters that don't change, that pretty much stay the same and are rather two-dimensional. And we have those in the typical, you know, naive, meek young woman in Marianne, and also the typical, you know, hot-headed young man in Dummies. Ironic twists and turns and surprises are a staple to a good comedy. And in the end, we'll see that the right marriage can finally take place. Ending a comedy with a marriage is also a pretty traditional move for playwrights at this time. And Moliere uses a traditional structure for this play. The five act play is kind of like a staple for European comedy at this time. And in a five act play, it follows a kind of predictable trajectory. Act one introduces the character and the problem. Act two, the problem becomes more complicated. Maybe another aspect is added to it. For us, we see that Oregon wants to marry Tartuffe to Marianne. That makes his problem even worse. Act three shows a climax or the beginning of, a, of some kind of solution to this problem. And we see that when Damis overhears that Tartuffe is infatuated with Elmir. And then act four shows a beginning of a resolution, but sometimes this isn't always the final resolution. Sometimes there's another twist, which there is. And then in act five, there we see everything go back to normal. And that's another quality of a comedy, that in the end, everything goes back to the way it should be. And it's a, you know, typical happy ending. But more importantly, let's think about what Moliere is making fun of in this play. This is a satire. And in satires, authors use mockery and caricature to make a point about their contemporary society or the people in their contemporary society. So think about who do we laugh at the most here? Who makes the stupidest mistakes in this play? I think it's the father of the family. It's Orgon who is 
the one who makes that crucial mistake of believing Tartuffe is actually a sincerely religious person. Orgon is also the one dynamic character in this play. Now, a dynamic character, unlike the stock character who stays the same, the dynamic character learns something and grows throughout the story. And I think Orgon learns to not be so gullible and to also be skeptical of those he does not know and of those who claim to be religious. Orgon learns that religion can be used to trick people. Tartuffe tries to take his money. He tries to get wealthy off of Orgon's desire to be a good religious person. So this skepticism that Orgon should have had is what makes this play an early Enlightenment work. Enlightenment thinkers, the philosophers, the writers, often questioned authority. And they advocated a kind of healthy skepticism toward anything, but especially religion. Many thinkers in the Enlightenment, especially in France too, saw the church as a corrupt institution. And it was an institution that was focused on gaining wealth more than saving souls. So in our next reading from the Enlightenment philosopher Immanuel Kant, we'll read his comprehensive definition of what enlightenment means. And he also expresses some skepticism about the church. So I look forward to reading what you think of the end of this play, and I will see you on the discussion board.